don't know what to do. I don't know how to my mouth hurts and it's just really swollen and I mean oh and my head hurts too. Can't tell them to stop hitting me, but he just kept on hitting me and hitting me and hitting me. And he keeps I, I don't do anything to make him mad. I don't do anything to make him upset. I don't do anything to to, to make him want to hit me. I keep trying to look beautiful for him, but he beats me. And I try to, you know, stay out of his way. I cook his meals. I I make sure everything is going well. I'm quiet. When, you know, he want to be disturbed, I make sure he's not disturbed for anything. But I don't know what's going on. And I, he... I can't do anything right, seems like, and I'm trying to do better, I'm trying to get better, I asked other women, I don't know, I don't know, and then he, 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 he my cell phone, he, he, he knows my text, he, 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 he has a trace on it, and, and everything, I don't, I need my family, I, I don't know if I could leave him or not, he just beats me all the time, I don't know how many times I've been in the emergency room, how many times i been at the hospital and how many times I have to tell the doctors people, I, I, nobody beats me or hit me. I have to keep telling them that. I tell them I fell. I tell them I, I ran into something. You know, I can't see without my glasses. I, I tell them all kinds of stuff. My my cloth teeth is in crooked. He, he beat me. My mouth is swollen. I don't know, but um, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I heard that um that lady that's on dialysis is a social worker and she helps so many people. Oh, he can help me. I can't deal with this no more. What is her name? Um, we lay um yeah. She, she's resourceful. Um, Lee, Lisa Baxter. Oh my God, I back and call her, but he might trace this call. But I, uh, I'll do it. I will call. I will call. I promise I'll call because this is the Lisa Baxter show, giving you the. 411 in the candy world. Hi, guys, and happy Sunday to you. How is everybody doing? There you go. There you go. I should have had my reading glasses next to me, too. So I hope everybody is good. Happy Sunday. Um, I did that little skit in peace because it's Women's Month, it's uh, Domestic Violence Month. This month covers a whole lot of stuff. And a lot of times with domestic mm -hmm. violence, you don't always know why the person go through what they go through or what the person does, what they do. But you feel sorry for the person and sometimes the person ends up losing their life. So get some help if you're out there. Uh, uh, there are places, there are resources, there are shelters. There are a lot of things for women and it's anonymous. Nobody has to know whoever beating you or hurting you or in, in any type of way, don't have to know. And they have places for you and they have places for you and your children. So be careful and be safe out there. Okay. All right. I had to tell you that. All right. My guest tonight, Miss Mary Bivens, I don't know what happened to her, but before the show started, I reached out a couple of times and I just don't know what happened. I'm just praying to God. Maybe they called her for a kidney. That's what I'm really hoping. I hope nothing's wrong, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm really concerned. You know, you get concerned about your guests because, you know, you talk to them, y'all talk and you make plans, but so much can happen when you do a show if you ever done one before. So I'm sorry and I apologize that she's not here and she's not on the show. And I'm calling her and contacting her left and right. So I will find out eventually. But it left several messages and texts and even emails. All right? So if you're out there, I hope you're safe. And I'm sorry we didn't get to do the show. I really want to get her a kidney. In spite of this young lady needs a kidney. Okay? I'm going to tell you a little about her anyway. Even though she's not on the show for the simple fact that um, her name is Mary Bivens. And... She got on dialysis when she was 19 years old, okay? Um, she have, she's been on, since she, was, she got on when she was 19. And then her kidneys end up, they end up, she ended up on dialysis. And then she got a kidney and then the kidney didn't work anymore. It didn't really work. So she's on the list again. And um, beautiful uh, Jeffrey Brown had asked me to do a show, you know, 
for all of us, you know what I mean? Because we care about uh, the warriors out there. So we would do a show for any and everybody out there. You know, Warriors Quest is our number one that does that. But as a family, we have to care enough to put you on it. Anybody on the show, whether they need dialysis, pre-dialysis, need a kidney or anything, we would put you and let you, you know, tell your story, let you put it out there, let you, you know, tell, you know, let you voice your opinion so people can really see the beautiful person that you are and help you to get that kidney. All right. So whether you can share it. Or, or inbox her if you if you were a blood type or anything the last we didn't get that far but if you can help in any way the young lady really needs a kidney and I just wanted to put that out there because she's sweet she's nice I put her pictures and everything up her information up you know what what she's trying to do um she was a uh, she was a former youth a former youth um, leader and youth minister in her church. So she's an active person with the youth. You know, to talk to her on the phone, she's very sweet. She's caring. She's very close to her family. So I wouldn't want her to lose out because she couldn't come from the emergency mm -hmm. or something technical or whatever the issue is. So if you're out there and you can help Miss Mary Bivens, please help her. All right? She really needs it. Okay? So I appreciate y'all tuning in and listening. Well, I got some tidbits for you, so don't think you're just going to get out of it because my guest's not here. Oh, Lisa going to give you a little something, something, a little here and there and there and everywhere. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. There's resources out there. Uh, you hear me talk about resources all the time, but do you really take advantage of these resources? Because I want you to. All right. You got AAKP. This is one of their magazines. I'm sorry. This is my AARP magazine. But... AAKP also have magazines too. All of the kidney people do. All right, the PKD people have it. This is PKD Life. They got, got a little love. Uh, this is PKD Life. They all have magazines out there. So I mean, they have different articles out there, different recipes for the article. Uh, in these magazines, different people's story. You'd be surprised. Sometimes there are married couples that's together that, that both have kidney issues. And I did have um, guests on my show that the, both of them had kidney issues. All right. And some of them have been techs that had kidney issues. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, what have you, some of them been nurses on dialysis. So you'd be surprised. Uh, listen, this disease don't have, uh, it's not prejudice. It will get you if it has to get you, if you um, have diabetes and it's un not in control, if you have high blood pressure, if you have a kidney disease, if you don't drink water, these things are important to the body. You got to listen to the body. You understand? So get your magazines, get involved in these type of places. I mean, with um, AAKP, I'm one of their health, uh, their ambassadors. All right. I'm one of their patient ambassadors. And with an uh, ESRD network, I'm a, a subject matter uh, a subject matter specialist. They call it subject matters when you, there's a different subject that dealing with kidney disease. And we'll get together and we'll discuss it and we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll you know, let our head down about it. What was our experience with it? I thought that was very interesting because a lot of times some, some dialysis patients are very private. I have my sister downstairs. She's extremely private. But my other sister that was on dialysis 16 years, she wasn't private. I'm not private. I put it all out there. I let y'all see any and everything that comes to me, my arm, I'm going to put it out there, my fistula, everything. So I want you guys just to take advantage of this stuff. Be a part of it. Don't be afraid. Give it a chance. I mean, even the, uh, the Polycystic Kidney Disease Foundation, all of these things that you can Google or call, I'll definitely put it in the chat. But I mean, I put it out there before. I put it up there before the uh, renal network. I mean, they have hotlines. So if you on dialysis, or even if you're not on dialysis, you just got kidney disease. You might not even have kidney failure yet. These uh, people will talk you through. They'll be a buddy to you. I've even volunteered with the National Kidney Foundation as a person that they would call. People could call 
and they won't use your real phone number. They use a, 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 a regular number, but it's hooked to your cell or it's hooked to your house phone. And they'll be able to call you and they'll talk to you. And sometimes you just listen and sometimes, you know, you would uh, help them in any way that you saw fit. So this can be done. So I, I cause I'm this year, well, this year is almost gone, but you would want to get more involved. I mean, kidney patients in, out there that need other kidney patients. Sometimes you don't want to hear from the doctor because the doctor's making money. Bless them. And I'm glad they're helping us. The nurses, the doctors, the whole team of them. But sometimes you get patients. You know, some of us make money. I, I'm not making any money. I wish I was, you know. As a uh, health ambassador for Rogerson, I, I made money. And uh, DCI, I haven't made any money yet, but I'm a, a, you know, I'm one of them for them as well. So I just, I told you that because I want you guys to give it a chance. I want you to take this challenge and get one, of, get in one of those foundations, get them all if you want to. I know with me, I'm a part of everything, even though I don't have heart disease, I don't have lung disease, and I don't even have cancer. My husband had colon cancer. So I belong to those foundations to help them raise money, to raise awareness, and to give. So I do those kind of things. But I, I don't do that to get anything. I do that to raise awareness because it's important. I mean, I didn't have cancer, but I watched my husband with that. I had people and friends with breast cancer. These kind of things, I see why they want you to raise money. You want you, It gives you something to do. It helps you to stay busy, even while you're waiting for a transplant. If you volunteer... And, and you wait because if you buy the phone and stuff like this and you're waiting for a kidney and everything, you're a nervous wreck. You don't want to be a nervous wreck. You want to be happy with it. And so when they get the call, because when I got the call for my transplant, I was at work. I'm like, what? And my, my packed bag was in my house. I'm like, who's going to bring the packed bag? You know, I had nobody at home anymore because my baby had died. So I'm like, what? So, I, you know, I, I went without all of my stuff. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, you want to be, I was busy at that time. You know what I'm saying? And I stayed busy. I didn't just was waiting. I was dealing with a lot, going through a lot and dealing with my family. You know, most of my family is on dialysis. So, you know, a lot of them anyway, not everybody, thank God, you know, but a lot of them are. So you got to do things to keep yourself busy. One thing that kept me busy is writing a book. Through the eyes of a dialysis patient is my book, right? Melody Takes Dialysis to Show and Tell is my other book, right? I'm telling you, you have it in you to write, okay? I probably need to adjust this thing better, but if I touch it, you might go away. And I probably should have hooked it up a little better before. I was working on that, so I'm new at this. But anyway, you could do anything you set out to do. You have a story. Maybe you're a poet. Maybe you're a songstress. Maybe you sew. I knew one guy, he sew and he made me mask and everything. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, you don't know what your gift might be, but whatever it is, whatever that gift is, I want you to use it. Use it to your ability. I know Melissa Bias, when she does the jewelry, she give, uh, you know, some to, you know, give it um, for a business called Remember Me. See, there are plenty of organizations out there. You got CKD. Uh, you got CKD Champions with Miss Dawn, the Queen. You know what I mean? You got so many out there, and they were on Facebook and everything. These people go listen to you talk this. So you don't have to be by yourself. Look at this. TSO. Oh, man. Now I can't even see that myself when I'm looking at it. The blood of Jesus. All right. Transplant support organization. They have their own uh, magazine. Some of these magazines are online. So if you don't want to, if you don't get a hard copy, you can get their newsletter or their new stuff in your email. You can get it online so you could see it. You can even look at it on their websites. So that's not a bad thing. Right, guys? There are plenty, plenty of things out there for you. Plenty of resources out there. Plenty of fun things you can do. I mean, some people think they can't even go on a vacation or a trip. You can go on a vacation or a trip. There's a boat. There's a dialysis boat that can take you to a cruise. Dialysis on the sea. You know what I'm saying? They, they're expensive, though, but that you can still go on a cruise if you want to go. 
I, nothing stopped me and my family from traveling. We traveled all over the world and we stopped, got our dialysis. We didn't play with dialysis now. We go to your treatment. I don't care where you flying or where you sailing or where you taking a train, a boat, a bus, a car. I don't care how you do it, but you better get to your treatment because you want to have a good time there. You don't want to get sick there, fall apart. There's nothing like having a wonderful trip and being sick. And everybody else around you is having a good time, they, you know, and everything. And you you sitting there, you know, you have gone or have dead. You don't want that. You know, be smarter about your 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 kidney disease. Learn something about it. Learn something from it. Take your medications and find out. You ever looked at your medications and read it, read the description of all the stuff that's on it and in it and the side effects? See if you get experience in any of these side effects. Talk it over with your doctor if you are, because these things do happen, all right? Dialysis matter, kidneys matter, kidney lights matter, transplant matter, being busy matter. How about that? Even being busy matter. I got stuff all over this bed. And it's funny, without my reading glass, you know, I can't see nothing. And now when I show you something, you can't see it. And I'm hoping this is playing good and right. Okay. I mean, church has helped me. God has helped me. That's another thing that helped me soothe going through the things I've been through. You know what I mean? You know, not just 12 years of dialysis and uh, and everything, getting the kidney. I didn't just slide through or walk through 12 years of dialysis. It had its good and its bad moments. You know what I mean? So, and I mean, I had the low blood pressure and the passing out and stuff. And that stuff, that stuff wasn't an easy thing. But if you're out there, I don't want you to not try dialysis if you need it. See how it affects you. Make it work for you because it can work for you. I had to look at it like it's saving my life. It did and it was. So I want you to try and do the same thing. I had Steven Johnson syndrome. I'm from uh, the doctor giving me a medication and I got all the side effects on the thing. My hair fell out. I had bumps and boils all over me. My skin would get infected. I couldn't be around people. My family didn't recognize me. I looked like a burn victim. And I almost died. And all of my organs started to shut down. But God stepped in and he saw your daughter, your sister through this thing. I'm telling you, I am telling you. I mean, I almost died more than once but I am still here. I'm here to do the Lisa Baxter show. I'm here to listen. I'm here to be a social worker to you. I'm here to be resourceful for you. I'm here to be a blessing to you, whatever it is. If you want to be on my show, I want you to let me know. If you're a doctor, if you're a foot doctor, I've been looking for a foot doctor, a GYN and a dentist and a mental health specialist. I've been saying that for months, but I haven't found some. Everybody's been jumping ship. But if you're out there, I'll take that. If maybe there's somebody out there that want to tell a story. I mean, we're not the only ones with stories and we don't want to just hear ourselves talk. We want to hear you out there talk. This is why we invite guests. A lot of people notice our story already anyway, you know, so. I would, want it, I would want you to let us want to be on the Lisa Baxter show. The show is only 30 minutes. It's only on on a Sunday. Okay. And uh, I, hey, I want you, it's about family. It's about illness, different types of illness. So you don't have to have a kidney disease to talk to me or call me. I mean, anything. A young lady had Lyme disease I had on the show. I had two people like that. And some people didn't have no sickness at all. So sometimes I'll have somebody that can give you job information. Maybe you're into politics or maybe you want to be a secretary, a security guard, a doctor, you know, anything. So, you know, I do that kind of thing. But if you're out there and this pandemic has affected you, I want you to let me know, too, because there are food out there for you. You know, I don't want you to think there's no food out there for you. There's free testing out there. If you if they said you had I mean, I'm not saying they charging you, but there's testing out there if you don't know where to get tested. So you 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 talk to me and we can deal with that. But if you need food or funds, you're, you're struggling, your rent is not paid. You, you know, the, you lost your job or the job is looking slow. The money is coming in like pennies. I want you to talk to me about that. That's what it's all about. We want to be helpful to you, resourceful to you. Whatever we don't know, don't have, we will connect or find the people that will get it to you. And I want you to know that. And I know Mr. Belcher has a show tonight. 
So I am not going to be before you long. I'm basically finished. I just wanted to chit chat with you, be respectful and tell you what happened and also be able to give you a couple of nuggets and a little tidbits so you can relax and have a great week over this week. All right. I got two doctor's appointments this week. I got to go to check out Hannah, my kidney, which I call Hannah. And I also have to go to um, uh, check out, you know, my doctor, you know, my, my physical. I had the physical already. You know, they, you know, they have you come back. Just I don't know what they have you come back for. I think there's one. I don't know. So I'm going to come back. I got two appointments this week and I'm going to do that. And also I'm going to be with Lady J this week. And I'm not the only one. Juan Bravo is going to be with her. Jared A. Brown and Melissa Bias. We were with her before and we're going to be with her again with part two. So that's this Thursday. All right. OK, so he's going to be putting notice and stuff up. OK, so I want you to know I care about you. I love you. I didn't want to disappoint you on tonight. I wanted to do something or give you something, say something or something. But I just didn't want to be rambling on either. You enjoy your week. Have fun with your family. You know, give God some time and take good care of yourself. Listen to your body. If it says rest, rest. If it says sleep, sleep. You need a vacation, vacation. Not so much with the pandemic, so you have to be creative around the house. How about that? Oh, who knew? All right. So I love you. God bless you. And I see you next week with my next week's guest. I'll let it be a surprise, even though I know. But I'm your girl, still forever giving you the 411. Peace and happiness, y'all. God bless. Do you know you can have kidney disease and not even know it? Nine out of 10 people who have stage three chronic kidney disease do not know it. The rate of kidney failure for African Americans is three times higher than among Caucasians. And one reason for this is that they are not aware when they have earlier stages of kidney disease. At a time, treatment could prevent the damage from progressing to the point when dialysis or kidney transplantation is necessary. In addition, due to high rates of diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease, Blacks and African Americans have an increased risk of developing kidney failure. African Americans need to be aware of these risk factors and visit their doctor or clinic regularly to check their blood sugar, blood pressure, urine protein, and kidney function. Be aware. Get tested. The life you save may be your own. For more information, contact UrbanKidneyAlliance.org.